So we're going to spend another day graphing lines using x and y intercepts. So when we do this, first thing we want to do is figure out what our two intercepts are. So looking at this first one, well, I see that 4y minus 8 equals 2x. Well, when we're dealing with intercepts, we want all of the variables on one side. So before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and move this 4y back to the other side so that I can go ahead and set each variable equal to 0. So I go ahead and do that. Now here's what I've got. I've got a negative 8 equals, and then I've got 2x minus 4y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And So to find that x-intercept, Remember, the x-intercept is on the x-axis. What is the value of y when you're on the x-axis? Do you go up or do you go down? No, you don't. You stay right where you're at. The value of y is 0. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the x-intercept to find that, and we're going to set y equal to 0 because any value on the x-axis, y is 0. So when we do that, it cancels out this term. So all I'm left with is negative 8 equals 2x. So I just have the one step of dividing by 2, and you've got your answer. So in this case, we end up with x equals negative 4. So I'll write that down. And I'll also write down the answer as an ordered pair. So remember, these are x-intercepts. This is negative 4 comma 0. So when y is 0, because I set y equal to 0, I got negative 4 for y. So I plot that. I go over four spaces on the y-axis. Notice that I didn't go up. I didn't go down because I set y equal to 0. Well, let's take a look at the y-intercept. I'm trying to find the y-intercept. You're doing the same sort of thing, but this time I want this the value of x to equal 0, because when I'm on the y-axis, I don't go left, I don't go right, I stay right on that axis. So for the y-intercept, I'm going to set x equal to 0. And so what I've got left, I set x equal to 0, this cancels out, so I'm left with just negative 8 equals negative 4y. And then from there, I just have the one step of dividing by the coefficient, negative 4. So when I do that, I'm just left with the value of y all by itself, and that's going to equal 2. So y equals 2. Now I'm going to write that answer as an ordered pair. When x was 0, y was 2. So I go ahead and plot that point over 0 up 2. Gives me a point right there. And then from there, I've got two points. I can draw my line between those two points. So what I do is just sketch that line. Oops, hopefully you did a better job than I did drawing that line. Well, we've got a few more problems to try, and these other problems are a little bit tougher because we have more x's and y's involved in the problem than it seems like we should have. So let's take a look at this first one here. I want to get x's and y's on the same side. So first thing I'm going to do is move this 12y over by subtracting it from both sides. But I'm also going to do the same thing with the x. I'm going to move this x over. I'm going to subtract that x from both sides. So what I'm left with is an equation with x and y on one side of the equal sign. So I've got negative 9y minus 3x equals negative 9. So I can set up my two problems here. Remember, you've got your x-intercept and you've got your y-intercept. And I'm going to set up both problems at the same time to make this problem go nice and quick. So remember, with the x-intercept, we're trying to set y equal to 0. So it's going to cancel out this term. So all I'm left with is negative 3x equals negative 9. On the other side, I want to now find the y-intercept. Remember, when we're finding the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0. So I've got only that negative 9y equals negative 9. And so that makes the problem go nice and quick, because all I, can do, all I have to do now is just divide by 
that number that's in front of the x, in this case negative 3, and then divide by the number that's in front of the y, negative 9, and we come up with our two values representing the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So x equals 3. Here, y equals this is a 9 here, so negative 9 divided by 9 makes positive 1. So we've got our two ordered pairs. When x is 3, y is 0, because I put 0 in place of the y when I found my x-intercept. Now I put 0 in place of the x, and I found the y-intercept, so this is 0, comma, 1. And those are the two intercepts. So over 3 to the right, up 0, and over 0, and then just up 1. And then we've got two points to draw the line. So that's this, the fast way to do the problem. I'm not showing as much work as I did on the last one, but you can see how fast the problems go if you just cover up one of the terms to find the other intercept. So, for instance, on the x-intercept here, I just covered up the y-term. Let's try that again with this one here. So, again, we're trying to find these intercepts. I've got my x-intercept. Remember, for the x-intercept, I'm setting y equal to 0. And for the y-intercept, I want to set x equal to 0. The reason why we do that is because when you're on the y-axis for the y-intercept, you don't go left. You don't go right. You stay right on that y-axis. That means x is 0. For the x-intercept, you don't go up. You don't go down. You stay right on that axis, so you go up 0 or down 0. And so that's why we're setting those values equal to 0. So let's take a look at our equations when we do that. When we set y equal to 0, it cancels this term out, so it's gone. So all we're left with is the 1 half x equals 2. And if we set x equal to 0, this term's gone. So all we're left with is negative 2y equals 2. So to solve this problem, we just need to do a one-step operation, which is to in this case, multiply by the reciprocal, 2 over 1. So multiply both sides by 2 over 1. Here, I have to divide by negative 2. And that gets my variables by themselves. So what we're left with is just x equals 4. So that point, when 0 is y, x is 4. So 4 comma 0. Put a 0 in place of y, we've got 4 for x. Here divided by negative 2. And so we're left with y equals negative 1. So again, we put 0 in for x, we got negative 1 for y. So those give us our two points. Over 4, up 0, that's the x-intercept where it crosses the x-axis. Over 0, down 1, that's the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. And then we draw the line between those points. Well, one last problem here. So this one, we're going to go ahead and do the same sort of thing we did on the last one. This one's all set up for x, y intercepts because x and y are on the same side. So again, for that x intercept, we always set y equal to 0. The reason why we do that is because on the x-axis, you don't go up. You don't go down. You are on that x-axis. So we're trying to find that x-intercept by figuring out what value we get when we have y equaling 0. For the y-intercept, same sort of thing. You want to find out what the value is where the line crosses this axis. The line crosses this axis, you don't go left. You don't go right. You stay right on that axis. So that's why we're setting x equal to 0. So we go ahead and set up our two problems. When we set y equal to 0, this term's gone. So I'm just left with 4x equals 12. For the other problem, if I set x equal to 0, x is gone. Left with negative 6y equals 12. So all I have to do now is do one step operation. And I've got my two intercepts. So here I'm going to divide by 4. Here I'm going to divide by negative 6. And we get our two values of x. So for the first one, we've got x equals.
equals 3, which would be 3 comma 0. So when y was 0, we got an x value of 3. Over here we get y equals negative 2. And that tells me that my x-intercept or x value was 0 when y was negative 2. So from there, we can plot those points over three spaces to the right, up 0 again because I don't go up. I don't go down for the x-intercept. For the y-intercept, I just go, don't go left, don't go right, just go straight down in this case, two spaces. It gives me my two points. So I draw the line between those points, and I've got my answer. So that is another day on the x and y-intercept.